everyone, welcome back to my channel. I was gonna say it's been a while, but it's been a week. It feels a long time. Do you wanna say hello? Come here. We Say hello. Hello. So, as you can see by the title, we are taking psychology tests today. Obviously, these don't determine anything. These aren't a diagnosis. I just wanted to do it for a little bit of fun. So, I'm gonna keep the intro nice and short. I'm actually gonna to move to the side so that I can put my screen recording on this side of the screen so you can actually see what I'm doing. You're welcome. So, the first psychology test is actually one that I've seen amazing Phil do. So, I'm gonna link his video below and I'm gonna do that one first and then I think I'm gonna do one more. Okay, so I've just had a look and it turns out it's questions that are actually typed out. It's not like a quiz that you go through the questions. So I'm just gonna put little like screen shots on the screen so that you can see what questions I'm on and what I'm looking at. I actually quickly went and got a notepad and pen so that I can keep track of my answers as I'm doing it. Um, but I don't think you need that. I think that's just me being a little bit extra. Okay, so question number one is, you are walking in a beautiful woodland area as the sun shines through the trees and a gentle breeze flows over your whole body. It's a beautiful day. You are walking with someone. Who are you walking with? I would say my partner because I don't go anywhere without him. So in this little dream and vision, whatevs, I'm gonna say it's, it's chat. Question number two is, as you walk through the woods up ahead of you, you see an animal in front of you. What kind of animal is it? A squirrel. I have no explanation for this other than the fact that when you're walking through the woods, you'll probably see a squirrel. <laughs> also, I really love squirrels. They're so cute. The gray ones, not the red ones. But I think the gray ones are the evil ones. I swear the red ones were the ones that were in this country, like to begin with, in England. And then the gray ones came over from like America or like another country or something. And now we just have like a load of gray ones and gray ones are the popular ones. Where have I heard that? Because if I've made that up, that's insane. But I feel like I've, I've read that somewhere. Like, that's a thing, that's a fact. I'm gonna have to Google it now. Much, much, much later. That, I did some research. It said the red squirrels are native to the UK and have been here for 10,000 years. And then the gray squirrels were introduced in the 1800s. So, <laughs> I didn't wanna say I'm a squirrel expert, but. <laughs> Question number three is, what happens with you and the animal and what interaction takes place between you and the animal? In an ideal world, a squirrel would just sit in the middle of the path and he would just sit there and he would let me give him snacks and just let me pick him up and take him home and just be a pet and sit on my shoulder and just we would have like the cool life together but i don't think that that's gonna happen but i kind of want it to question number four is as you walk deeper into the woods you come to a clearing and in the middle of the clearing is your perfect house describe its size okay so my perfect house would be kind of like lorelei's house from gilmore girls like kind of medium size not like a mansion not like a big house like a medium sized house and it would be like nice and cozy vibes i think that would be like the envision and it would have a porch swing as well definitely daisy just whispered and a pool question five is as you walk closer to the house and see more of it is it surrounded by a fence so i don't know if it has like a fence maybe if it does it would be like a white picket fence but i kind of see it more to have like little hedges kind of i don't know question six is you tentatively walk to the front door of this house and as you enter the front door it is slightly ajar as you walk through the door to the dining area and see the table describe what you see and what is on or around the table um i think i would have sort of like a round table like a medium sized like round table with like wooden chairs around it it's very laurel like gilmore and there would be maybe like a vase of flowers or like a fruit bowl or something kind of like minimal but like i would want like placemats and stuff on it but i feel like i'd put them away in the cupboard and get them out at meal times i don't know I'm, i feel like i'm putting too much thought into this but sort of like a minimal table maybe like a tablecloth on it like a oh like a um what print is it like a tartan print maybe i feel like that would look really good question seven as you finish looking around you exit the house via the back door into the garden area which has a large area of grass in the center of the garden in the grass you see a cup what material was the cup made from? Ceramic, glass, porcelain, etc. If it's a cup, I'm gonna say plastic. Cause if it was like, if it had said like teacup, I would have said like, oh, porcelain or china or something or whatever. But like a cup, I kind of imagine like a kid's cup that they have so that they don't like break glass or china ones. So I'm gonna say like, like a plastic, but like a hard plastic. Question number eight is what do you do with the cup? I feel like if it had like loads of bugs in and it was like disgusting, I would just like maybe put it in the bin or recycle it or whatever. But if it was like, if it had just been like dropped there, it would have been there for like not very long and it was fine. 
take it in the home, maybe put it through the dishwasher, give it a little wash and then use it. I don't know. Question number nine. As you walk to the bottom of the garden, you find yourself standing at the edge of a body of water. What type of body of water is it? Is it a river, a lake, a pond, etc.? In an ideal world, I would live very close to the sea, not like on a cliff so that when the tide comes in, erosion, that shit, you fall in, but like a nice distance to the sea, maybe like you could see it. But I feel like at the bottom of my garden, I would want like some sort of like fish pond and have fish. Question 10, as you think about how to get back home, you have to cross the water. I don't think it'd be very deep, so I could just like walk through it, carefully walk through it. So that is my answers to the psychology quiz. I'm gonna scroll down and see what my answers reflect. Question number one is, the person you are walking with is the most important person in your life. I put Chad, and that's really sweet. Question number two is, the size of the animal is representative of your perception of the size of your problems. Squirrels, I said squirrel. They're not that big, but they're like, they're like a medium sized thing to find in the forest. So I would say my problems are medium sized. Question number three is the severity of your interaction you have with the animal is representative of how you deal with your problems. Passive, aggressive. I said be kind to the squirrel and give it a snack and it would come home with me and I could live with it. This isn't Disney, honey. It's not, you can't take a wild animal home to live with you in your house. Can you imagine the next morning? In an ideal world, I would take a squirrel home and he would be my friend. So maybe I approach my problems kindly and compassionately. I, th I, th I That's a win. I'm taking that as a win. That's a good thing. Okay. Well, I see it was crazy, but you know. Question four. The size of your dream home is representative of the size of your ambition to resolve your problems. Mine are medium. I think because I'm in therapy, a medium sized house is good because if I was sort of small and like, if my problems I thought were small and I didn't want to approach them, that would be worrying. But if they were like so big that I would do everything to resolve them, again, my I don't know. I don't feel like that's good because my therapist sometimes tell me, tells me just to just sit with my problems. So maybe that's a good thing that they're medium sized. I don't know. I just wanted a medium sized house. Number five is no fence indicates an open personality. People are welcome at all times. The presence of a fence is more indicative. I haven't got my glasses on so I can't see. Indicative of a closed personality. You'd prefer people not to drop by unannounced. I said a picket fence and they're quite small. They're maybe in the back garden. I'd want a bit more privacy now that I'm thinking about it, but I said a picket fence. They're quite small. Or I said hedges, like a small hedge. So maybe I'm like somewhere in the middle. Like I want to be involved with people, but at the same time, I, which is true. And sometimes I want to be on my own. So I kind of agree with that one. Question six, if your answer did not include food, people or flowers, then you are genuinely unhappy. Well, I said a fruit bowl and flowers. I didn't say people. To be fair, if Chad was living in this house, he would always be in the kitchen, bless him, but he was not in this instance. He's probably busy at work, I don't know, but food, definitely, because I said fruit bowl and a vase of flowers on the table. Yes, so I am generally happy. Oh shit. Question seven, the durability of the material on which the cup is made from is representative of the perceived durability of your relationship with the person from number one. For example, if you chose plastic, paper, or disposable, you don't really value the person. That is not true. Wow. Wow. That is not true. I value Chad more than anything. But because it said cup, my mind went to plastic. Obviously like a reusable plastic one and it's quite like a strong plastic. It's not like a, like you know the ones that you get like a water cooler. Not try, those try ones. And dig a, try, try and dig yourself out that hole now. <laughs> <laughs> Chad is very valued. He is very valued and he knows he is. Okay. Dang it, he's gonna wash this back and be like, you don't love me. Question eight was what would you do with the cup is representative of your attitudes towards the person in number one. I said I would take it in home and wash it. Huh? I would take Chad in and wash him. I don't know if I would wash him. If he wanted, this is no. If Chad wanted me to wash him, I would wash him, but I would, I would take him back in home and I would give him a little wash and get him spick and span. So I think that's sweet. Nine, the size of the body of the water is representative of the size of your sexual desire. I said a pond, a fish pond. Ooh, are there fish involved in these desires? I, mm, mm. 10, how wet you get in crossing the, 
<laughs> Question 10, how wet you get in crossing the water is indicative of the relative importance of your sex life. Well, I get wet up to my knees, so. That was the walk into the woods psychology quiz. I agree with some of them, but some of them I don't because some of them, like picturing your perfect house, I have actually given a lot of thought to what I want my house to look like. So I just describe that rather than just going off the top of my head and just imagining things because I genuinely do know what I want my future house to look like. So yeah. So for the last quiz, I'm gonna do the Winnie the Pooh psychology test. Um, for this one, I am gonna put the questions on the screen. I think maybe I'm gonna move to the side and put them on the screen, so. Okay, so for the Winnie the Pooh one, I've got it up here, and I'm just gonna put screenshots on this screen somewhere of all the questions, so we can go through it together. Okay, question one. I don't feel that things are under control unless I am in charge. I'm gonna put like a double thumbs up. Question number two. People sometimes tell me I give unrelated answers to their questions. I'm gonna do a single thumbs up for that one, because I, it happens like sometimes. Question three, when I am alone, I sometimes feel as if there's someone or something watching me. I do freak myself out. Like if I have the door open ajar, I am worried that if there's no one, like if there's no landing light on and I'm sat in the dark, like on my phone, I do get worried that someone's watching me. So maybe like a double thumbs up for that one. Question four, I always make sure that my work is well planned and well structured. See, I'm doing an online course at the minute and I have to do it for like several weeks and I thought that I would be like, ah, go with the flow, go with the flow. But I went out like a month before and got a new notepad, I got new stationery, I prepped everything in this notepad before I had to even use it. So maybe that's like a triple thumbs up. Maybe, actually maybe just a double thumbs up because it's not everything but quite a lot of things I will have to like prepare beforehand. Question five is that I sometimes think that I have powers that other people would not be able to understand. Maybe not like powers but maybe just like ways of seeing things. I do feel very strongly that I'm like right and I've, I've never been like that normally. I just kind of go with the flow and I'm like oh whatever whatever but now I've sort of like found my own voice. Question six. My thoughts have a tendency to run in a strange loop and I dwell on weird themes and I wish I could get rid of this. I'm gonna put a double thumbs up because I have anxiety and a suspected neuro spiciness to me so I'm gonna put that one. Double thumbs up. Question seven is I talk more and think faster than others. Triple thumbs up. <laughs> Enough said. Question eight. I'm almost never happy and I can't really think of anything that would make me happy. Mm, single thumbs up. Question nine. I often think that interactions with people are just more trouble than they're worth. Double thumbs up. Question 10, I finish my work and chores before tending to the hobbies and fun. A thumbs down. I tend to procrastinate things that I have to do and I start on the fun things because the boring things that I should be doing are so like debilitating that I cannot and do not want to do them. Question 11, I am quick to act on a whim, thinking little about the negative consequences of my actions. It depends what it is. If it's impulse spending, I'm a culprit. But other things, I overthink the consequences. So maybe like a thumbs down. Question 12, I am always worried about one thing or another. Triple thumbs up. Question 13, when I start feeling down, it's as if I keep sinking until I've hit rock bottom. Double thumbs up. Cause not always, but more often than not, yeah. Question 14, if a good thing comes my way, I don't feel happy about it and I don't feel like I deserve to be happy. Single thumbs up. Question 15, I am undersensitive to social cues and the prospect of danger. No, I'm undersensitive. No, double thumbs down. Question 16, even when things are going fine for me, I am anxious that it won't last. Triple thumbs up. Question 17, when things in life get too boring, I feel compelled to start adding a little color to the situation to get the party started. I don't know about get the party started, but just to make it less boring, double thumbs up. Question 18, sarcasm and tone of voice are often lost on me. Double thumbs down. I'm pretty good at picking up on stuff like that. Question 19, I am uncomfortable around strangers and sometimes fantasize that they will hurt me. Double thumbs up, because not always, but sometimes I'm a bit like, what if, what if, what if, but I already know that's anxiety. Question 20, I have been sad most of my life. I was gonna put yes, but I have been anxious most of my life, so I'm just gonna put like a single thumbs up. Question 21, I'm often told that I'm a very correct and respected person. Like people agree with me when I talk, so maybe like a double thumbs up, not like a triple thumbs up, because like everyone gets stuff wrong, but like. Question 22, with the thought of having no one in my corner to look out for me makes me feel seriously afraid. I don't know about afraid, but definitely sad. So maybe like a double thumbs up for that one. Question 23, sometimes people smile at me in the street and I don't really know why. I know why, they just do it to be nice, but like I don't know why, why, why do we do that? 
like I do it to people as well, but why do we do that? I'm gonna put a single thumbs up. Question 24, my thoughts jump from topic to topic with little consistency or control. <laughs> Triple thumbs up. It's either anxiety or neurospiciness. Question 25. I frequently have problems staying with the task at hand. I was going to be like, no, I'm really concentrated, blah, blah, blah. But this morning I was supposed to be doing my online stuff and I decided to film instead or I was supposed to be on a Zoom and I decided to fold up laundry instead. So maybe like a double thumbs up because if it's something that I'm like, it's really grabbing my attention, I will like scroll in on TikTok. It's one of those things where I'm like focused and zoned in for like three hours. I don't know, it depends on the task. I'm gonna do a double thumbs up for that one. Question 26, when I feel overwhelmed by my senses, I have to isolate myself and shut them down. Triple thumbs up. <laughs> Question 27, I am constantly daydreaming. Double thumbs up, because more often than not I am, but not like all the time. Question 28, I seem to have so much energy that I can sometimes be exhausting or annoying to others. It depends on a lot of things, but I'm gonna go with a single thumbs up. A lot of the time I am bouncing off the walls and I look like that I am on something, but a lot of the time I'm just like sleeping or like really sleepy or just like not in the mood. Question 29, I take things too literally, so I often miss the intention behind what people are trying to say. Now, sometimes I've noticed recently, especially, I've noticed it, jokes, not, no, not so much jokes, but like maybe a bit of sarcasm, straight over my head straight over my head i never used to be like that i could catch on it quick quite quite quick but maybe it says i often miss things maybe like a single thumbs down question 30 thank god we only have like three or four questions left people think i say strange things in my mind i'm sure that they talk about me behind my back picking apart every little thing i said or did depends where i am if it's like a workplace or somewhere that I'm like forced to go all the time, that kind of thing, people, I feel like people get to know me better and kind of expect my presence and stuff like that. So then I do think because I'm like part of the inner circle and I'm like a part of it, I do think people would be more likely to pick me apart then. But if it's just like maybe like going to the shops, I'm never going to see them again. I still feel like they would, but I, I'm, I'm fine. Triple thumbs up. <laughs> Question 31, I frequently lose things forgetting where I put my stuff. Double thumbs up, because more often than not I lose things, but a lot of the time I do put things in certain places and like they have their place and they have to be organized. Like Chad, bless him, when he tidies up, he just puts things in drawers and just forgets that they're even there. I can't put things away unless they have a place. Like they have to have an organization, they have to be in a drawer, in a drawer separator, and they have to like, they have to be organized. But Chad's like, Chad will just, shove things in drawers and just forget they even exist. Question 32, second to last question. I feel better about making big decisions if I get others to suggest a course of action and then follow that. Yes, because then I just blame them if it goes tits up. So sometimes I like doing my own thing, but I think I'm gonna go double thumbs up for that one. Question 33, I take care to spend my money wisely so that I can handle an unforeseen situation double thumbs down, YOLO. So I've got my results back. I'm gonna put them on screen so you can have a little look at them. The strongest result was Piglet, which we already knew because if anyone's new here, you probably won't know, but Millie has anxiety. Millie goes to therapy for anxiety. Millie's on medication for anxiety. So it was obvious that anxiety was gonna come back the most prominent si um, symptom. ADHD, 77%. Obviously, I just wanna point out that this is not a diagnostic tool. This is literally just a bit of fun. This just is a bit of fun. OCD, rabbit. 60%. And then we have Rue, which is autism, which is 47. Yesterday I did the quiz and I got in the high 50s, so I don't know why it's gone down today, which is my proving my point that it's not a diagnostic tool because you, you're not less autistic one day than you are another. You either are autistic or you're not. Even though it's a spectrum, it doesn't change that much in like 24 hours. Do you know what I mean? Like it's one of those things that you have to consistently work on. Same as anxiety, but then we've got Eeyore. He represents depression. I've got 73%. I, anxiety and depression are very linked. I am on antidepressants. So it doesn't surprise me that Eeyore um, makes a bit of a prominent appearance up here. And then we've got, this is the one that my partner sort of was like, what the heck yesterday when I told him about it. 80% schizophrenia. I don't know enough about schizophrenia to say, yeah, I could have it or no, I don't have it. So I'm just gonna better educate myself on schizophrenia before I start doing that. And then we've got Pooh, who's ADD, um, and he's 77%. So, I mean, I'm, I'm shocked by some of them, like surprised, not shocked, 
but the one that did not surprise me was Piglet. Obviously Piglet was going to be very high on that obviously. So that brings us to the end of the video. If you did enjoy it, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel. I was looking through my analytics the other day and I think 90 something percent of people who watch my videos are not subscribed. So this is your friendly little reminder. If you do want to subscribe to my channel, the button's just down here. If you want to click the little bell icon next to it, you get notified when I upload. My uploading system schedule is kind of all over the place. I try and upload on Mondays, but sometimes if I feel like adding a cheeky little midweek video. You will get notified if I do, so you won't miss out on an upload. If you do try any of these tests at home, if you feel like putting the answers in the comments, I would really love to look through them and see how accurate you feel they are. Um, mine was semi-accurate. I'll give it, I'll give it half a point. So yeah, enjoy the rest of your week and I will see you next Monday. Bye!